yourself go to bed last night? Yeah. Social media, <laughs> television, all that sort of stuff. Look, I want to talk about uh, preventing fatigue today. There's been some incredible work done out in the industry creating systems and strategies to manage fatigue in terms of shift lengths and rotations and you know, really supporting people to manage their, the way they work <coughs> to reduce their risk of fatigue. What I want to talk about is helping a person, supporting a person and educating a person to actually take care of themselves so they reduce their fatigue. If you're yawning at 10.30 in the morning, it's because you're dehydrated, not because you're tired. The average Australian adult, in fact 90% of Australian adults, have lost their thirst reflex and are chronically dehydrated. We've lost our thirst reflex because we're constantly wetting our mouths with things that don't hydrate us very well. Not <coughs> lattes. <laughs> now, when are you actually most dehydrated? Yeah, when you wake up. You think about it. You've been under a doona for five, six, seven, eight hours. So you haven't drunk water for that time. Could have been a hot night, or it could have been heating on in the house. You might be laying next to another body, which is generating more heat. You may have had alcohol the night before, which is going to cause you to lose water. You may have even got lucky before you went to sleep. <laughs> Which could have been the reason for the alcohol, and no, we won't go there, right? So, when you wake up, you're very dehydrated. Now, here's the thing. When you're dehydrated, your body holds onto its urine for a lot longer, because it can't spare the extra water. So when you do pass your urine, it's concentrated. And the more dehydrated you are, the darker the colour of your urine. And I'll bet you some of you, your urine probably glows in the dark when you wake up in the morning. <laughs> so the first thing to do when you get out of bed before you even think is drink 25% of your daily water intake. And you can squeeze the juice of half a lemon into it and I'll explain why later on. Got two glasses of water here. Let's just say they're from two different swimming pools. This one here is a pH of 7.4, this one's got a pH of 6.8. Now I can drink them both, I can swim in them both, but there's a massive difference between them. And the difference is this one here at 7.4 can absorb and carry over a hundred times more oxygen than this one can. Uh, where were we? Let's have a look. The reason I'm talking about swimming pools is because the human body's the same. So your arterial blood, which is the bright red blood that flows out from your heart, has a pH of 7.4. Your venous blood, which is the darker blood coming back to your heart, has a pH of 7.35. The rest of your body fluids, your extracellular and intracellular fluids, they have a pH of somewhere between 7 to 7.2. What do you think would happen to you if the pH of your arterial blood dropped from 7.4 to 7.2? <coughs> You'd be dead. It'd be in 2007, I think. And, um, a young guy came up to me, he came bounding up, he said, G'day John, how are you? And I said, I'm good. Big grin on his face and he said, you don't remember me, do you? And I said, should I? And he said, well, remember when you did men's health at the other offices 18 months ago? And I said, yeah. And he said, I came up for a chat with you at the end of it. And I said, I do remember you. What happened? He goes, well, I took your advice. Now this young guy's story was, 30 years of age, <coughs> extremely overweight, terrible sleep apnea, two kids, and a wife who hated him. <laughs> well, because his snoring, she was sleeping down the other end of the house and he was still keeping her awake. <laughs> and he said, my life is about to completely fall apart. I need to do something. So I told him what to do. And he said, here I am. I took it on. And he said, you told me it was going to be hard, but it was okay. The prize was good enough. He said, it took about two weeks and I stopped snoring. I started getting my energy back. I started going back to the gym. He said, I've lost 32 kilos. 
And so my wife and I are in love again, and I'm so happy. We have a health catastrophe unfolding in our society called soft drink. In America, it's called soda. In 2009, which is six years ago, the average soda consumption in the US was just a smidgen under three and a half cans per person per day. So when you've got employees there pouring soft drink down their throats, their body, their body is battling acidity all day. And the number of times a manager will meet you and go, oh, man, I'm sorry, you have to do this. I said, what do you mean? Oh, these blokes are pigs. You know, they're rude. They won't listen. They're going to pull hair for smoke, you know. But that never, ever happens. Because they're smart. And they don't want to get sick and they don't want to die. And when you engage them with something you're interested in, they lap it up. And such was the case at a depot from a council here in Melbourne. And instead of getting them for 45 minutes, I was with them for two and a half hours. They wouldn't let me leave. It was great. And um, the manager rang me two weeks later and he said, I can't believe what's happening in this workplace. I said, why? He said, well, number one, he said, I went to get a cup of coffee the other day and someone poked her head in the door and said, have you had enough water today yet? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, I was watching the guys load up the truck and he said, one of the young guys came to the truck, they were going to work on the roads and one of the older blokes said, where's your water bottle, son? You're not getting on this truck if you haven't got water bottles. <laughs> they do, they don't care for each other, you know? Number one, if you eat three meals a day, you should take at least two, preferably three dumps a day. I'm going to get a little basic for a while. Number two, when you do go, it should be an easeful experience. There should be no need for a set of handle grips on the underside of the room. Number three, when you stand back and look, look back with pride, <laughs> What you should have left behind are nicely formed, slightly fluffy floaters, definitely no slimy sinkers and no avalanches down the back of the box. <laughs> and number four, it should be completely and perfectly safe for another human being to walk in there reading the article and not die. <laughs> but there's two things that are really easy to make. The first one is kefir water. And basically, you just need to buy some kefir grains, and you can get those online. And um, you just put two dessert spoons of kefir grain in like a four litre jug. Then you dissolve a third of a cup of sugar. It can be white sugar if you want. Uh, I like to use coconut sugar because it's a little bit of a different flavour. And you dissolve it in hot water, and add some cold water to it, pour it in, and then fill the whole up with water until it's full. Cover it up with a tea towel. For two days, the whole lot ferments, produces this billions and billions of probiotic in there, and it comes out slightly fizzy. You can put it in a jug, or you can put it in bottles, put it in the fridge. Your kids will love it, and half a bottle of that a day will keep your bowels humming. Back when I first started talking about this, there was one colonic hydrotherapist in Melbourne. She was out in Campbell, and she used to call herself the Pooh Fairy. <laughs> she was an awesome lady. Awesome lady. She was a nurse who decided she wanted to change her career. Yeah? And then you get stress. And you see, when you get stressed, you start releasing chemicals in your body that ultimately start to make your body acidic. And they change the way you breathe and you blow off too much carbon dioxide. How many of you have got a very, very high skill level of worry? <laughs> Isn't it amazing? So I'm going to give you a little strategy here. I'm going to finish with this as to one of the best things that you can do to get your mind to behave itself and to feel good about yourself and to alkalize your universe. Would that be good? It's a simple strategy. Very simple. All you have to do Be kind. Choose to be really kind to other people, especially the ones you do not know. If you 
you do, you'll change the world. So instead of being curt with your barista, <laughs> when you go past later, be and thank them for the beautiful coffee they made you this morning. And then we can get right back to what Mark said right at the start, is we can start taking more care of other people. And I promise you, if you set your life about caring for others above yourself, you'll be happy, you will be well, and just before you close your eyes for the final time and you look back over your life, you will feel good about yourself. <laughs> Minerals, and I would be talking to a naturopath about that, or a doctor who's trained in integrated medicine. That's a really cool thing we've got in this country. At Swinburne University, there is a college of integrated medicine where medical doctors can go back and do two years training to learn how to deliver medicine without delivering pharmaceutical drugs and surgery. So if you ring Swinburne University, they'll tell you where the student is near you, and you can get that. Uh, I just love this morning, I, I don't know how you feel, but fatigue has just disappeared as an idea. I feel so excited about the water I'm going to drink now. <laughs>